Mark, thank you so much for all of the insights you've given us in the past on the Phenom 100. I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about the Phenom 300. Tell me about Mar the mission. Marvelous airplane. Um, it has, um, let's put it this way, it's a perfect airplane for us between the West Coast and the Mississippi nonstop. So we can go from Orange County to Chicago with the airplane. It has a performance of a 757, which I used to fly as far as thrust to weight ratio. Um, it's not as fast as some airline jets, but once again, if we're talking miles per minute, seven miles per minute, it does 440 knots, uh, about Mach 0.74 at the normal maximum cruise. Uh, the high end speed is Mach 78 to two, or 320 knots. The thrust in the engines, you have 18,000, uh, excuse me, um, the engines are 3,360 pounds of thrust, which allows us an 18,000 pound take, uh, takeoff weight. So there's, it's, it, the best way I can describe it is you can put five 200 pounders full luggage and full fuel and go the full range of the airplane. We have it in a seven seat configuration, although you can get it up to nine seats with a, with a, a divan option or a, a belted lab. But with the seven seat configuration, I can put seven 200 pounders in it, full luggage and fly it for three solid hours, which is gonna get us um, 1300 miles down range. If we have five people, full luggage, full fuel, we're gonna be closer to 1700 miles down range. So the airplane's extremely capable. We were just in Aspen the other day and in winter time, the climb performance gives you a lot of confidence going out of mountain airports, especially it's high bar and you can't really see what's out there. Uh, but we can take a full load of the phenom out of Aspen uh, at 28 degrees Celsius in the summer, 82 degrees Fahrenheit from Aspen to San Francisco. So it's extremely capable airplane. Uh, we use it uh, very all we go into Telluride. Um, it, it can operate in the airport up to 10,000 feet, but I would have no hesitation flying the phenom in any type of summer or winter environment in challenging airports. Uh, the it, it's uh, wing has ground spoilers on it. It doesn't have thrust reversers, but the ground spoilers and the larger tires and carbon brakes gives you really good runway stopping performance. So between the acceleration and takeoff, you have very short balanced field lengths on takeoff. And on landing, you have even with the contaminated runway, um, if you got a runway that's at least 7,000 feet, you can go up to you know medium braking action, contaminated type runway without a problem. So I I just it's like being back in an airline jet. It's extremely reliable, very solid. You can almost feel the heftiness of the airplane as you're taxing out compared to the Phenom 100, which is a wonderful airplane airplane too. But that's a very light jet. The Phenom 300 brings it into a whole different class of a, right. of, a of a light jet, but it incredible performance. And we were taken off out of Santa Maria the other day. We were only at 15,000 pounds for takeoff. And we're climbing better than 5,000 feet a minute with the airplane. So it's just, it just is, is incredible. Straight at max takeoff weight, sea level to 45,000 feet, uh, no problem, less than, less than um, 20 minutes. So what's so, your normal cruising altitude? The ceiling's 45,000 feet? 45, so we generally, the airplane is most fuel efficient, about 39,000. So we generally plan at 40,000 westbound and 41 eastbound. And we use the capability to go to 43 or 45 in case you want a little better fuel burn or if it's a condition of ride. Um, it's, it's, it's less fuel efficient, mid 30s. Um, and that's actually where you get your best speed, but you're gonna pay for it in fuel. Basically, if you operate the airplane above 40, 40,000 feet or above, you're burning down to 16 pounds a minute. Low altitude, you're at more like 25. So the first hour, we flight planted at 1,350 pounds for the first hour, the second hour at 1,000, and the subsequent hour about 900 pounds, to 800 pounds. And that will give us a solid um, Mach 0.72, 424 knot true airspeed cruise all the way through 45,000 feet and give us the range. If you want to sacrifice range, you don't mind burning a little fuel, you can get it up to 7.5, 7.6, put it in the mid-30s, but you're going to be burning a lot of fuel with it. 
Well, it's always a trade-off. I love the math that you did for me in the Phenom 100 podcast, where you told me that if you're flying the Phenom 100, you're going six nautical miles a minute at right. 15 pounds of fuel per minute. What's that math for the Phenom 300? Uh, 60 knots more, seven miles a minute and 25 pounds a minute. We'll give you a very conservative um, diversion holding low altitude holding or low altitude diversion. So it works very well. Um, and also for flight plan. If we had a general anywhere like a diverting to an alternate, or the airport's within 30 minutes, I can easily say that um, it's gonna cost me 750 pounds and I will do it with, because it's low altitude, I'll probably do it at five miles a minute. Um, we, you know, up to 200 miles. So it's, it's very capable jet. I don't like to wait to see what the fuel numbers are before I start it. I like to have an idea in my mind of something that's conservative, solid, and always works. And that works for me. I love it. I think it makes it really simple. And really, it makes lay people who are not pilots able to understand the math of the calculations that you do every day on the fly in the aircraft. Tell me a little bit more about working in the cockpit of the Phenom 300. What's the pilot workload like and the crew resource management up there? It's it's actually the same as the 100. Uh, same cockpit, maybe an inch shorter for me, but it's the same cockpit. You, we use the Garmin 1000 there. The Phenoms now are, the 300s are coming out with the Garmin 3000, which is a wonderful flight management system to work with. But the transition from one to the other, the only difference is, is the placement of some of the buttons in the flight management system to where you have to when I switch airplanes I have to physically think okay where am I going to put my finger but other than that it's exactly the same um, it, it really if you can get a one with a Garmin 3000 you have much larger pilot uh, flight displays and uh, MFD displays uh, with multiple screens that you can you can have screens split to pull up information that you might want to use you know 100 less so, but with the Garmin 1000 system uh, that we have on the 300, it, it's extremely, let's say after being trained in the 100, it's, it was a simple transition. The, um, the biggest thing for a pilot to get used to if they're upgrading from the Phenom 100 to the 300 is the performance of the jet. Um, the, Phenom three, the Phenom 300 will outclimb a 100 on one engine. So you lose, an, you lose an engine on the Phenom 300, you're doing better than 102 in many cases. In many cases, I, I, it's it's like I said, the thrust to weight ratio is very similar to the Boeing 757, which is probably one of the best performing airline jets around as far as climb capability, the rate of climb and uh, stopping capability. Uh, so I'm I'm just when I moved it back into the Phenom 300, I said I feel like I'm back in the airline jet, it's solid, it's reliable, haven't had any issues with it. It's a great airplane, single pilot or two pilot. I, in fact, I know some people who fly it single pilot, and as I said, they plan ahead, manage the workload, but it's very capable. Well, tell me about what it's like in the back for the passengers. Well, we have a seven seat arrangement. So we have a, a refreshment center with uh, hot coffee, um, hot, and uh, we put a thermos of hot water in there. We have everything as far as the soft drinks and liquor capability. Uh, but once you're in the seats, the seats are very similar, except in the Phenom 300, the seats articulate a little bit better. They, they recline more. You can actually slide them out towards the center of the aisle. And you can swivel them a bit. Uh, it makes it a lot more comfortable for the passengers. You have, we're in a configuration where we have uh, six seats. So back by the lavatory are two forward facing seats, and then two forward facing seats in front of that with emergency exit. And then two aft facing seats. And then as you open the door, there's an aft facing seventh seat right by the refreshment center. So the person, if somebody's we're taking a full load and somebody's in the seventh seat there, they become mother and they have to serve everybody else. That's the bar. We call that the bartender instead of the flight attendant on a private flight. I think. Right. I always, I always, I, I don't know why. I just always refer to it. Somebody has to be mom here, you know, and, and help everybody else. Excellent. It, it's much more. It has the same comfort though. It has good. Um, the Embraer jets have excellent sound proofing, so it's a good ambient noise environment for cruise altitude. Uh, the seats are comfortable, so if you're in them for four hours at the most, uh, there's no discomfort with that. 
Uh, they do have a passenger information system, uh, which would tell them where they are and some information about the speed and how high we're flying. Also, in the Phenon 300, the passengers can control the cabin temperature. We can set the cabin temperature control in the cockpit to transfer it to the passenger in seat number four, and they can adjust the temperature to the heart's content. That is a really nice feature. What about the luggage capacity in this larger plane? Even better, 463 pounds. Um, I, the other day I actually maxed out the volume and we were near the max weight. But I even have a picture of it. I don't know if you'd be able to see this, but I just will show it to you about the amount of luggage we took, took in this airplane out of Aspen. It was a uh, family of four. And uh, now this is a picture that shows the luggage we loaded but there was also two other bags and we had our crew luggage in there and uh, our storage bin. But that is what it looked like when we unloaded it. Amazing. Super luggage capacity. I've, I've taken, you know, four sets of golf clubs in there, all the bags. Um, it's, it's long, it'll take full size skis. It's just not a, I don't think a passion can show up with something we can't load in that luggage compartment. It really is fantastic. And plus, it keeps me in shape doing it. Yeah, no kidding. Climbing in and out of the seats and loading baggage. That's why you look so young. That's the secret. That's the fountain of yeah. youth for you, Mark, I can tell. What about the maintenance and the reliability of the Phenom 300? I've heard they're good, but I'd love to hear that from you, too. I have not had any maintenance issues on it yet. Um, it's extremely reliable. It's very, it's a very predictable airplane in, in, in climate, but it's extremely reliable mechanically. Um, like I said, I haven't had anything. There's no start issues. There's been no service issues with the engines or the airframe, except for one thing. There's a current AD note out on the airplane, a service quarter to inspect and potentially replace balance weights in the uh, control services and the rudder and the elevator. It's something that all Phenon operators are going through right now. And it's, it's slowed down our acquisition of Phenon 300s. Uh, because Embraer is working through the process of making sure the AD is, is appropriate to the service number of the airplane and how many years in service it's been. But that's the only thing I can think of that I'm aware of with that airplane that's come out from Embraer. And even then, it's just more of a hiccup in the road versus a, a major problem. Uh, it does take some downtime and everything. Um, both airplanes, um, besides just normal annual inspections, uh, if they're operating less than 600 hours a year or so, I guess. Maybe inspections, we have it on continuous maintenance. Uh, the major cost of any of the feed on 100 or 300 is a landing gear inspection replacement at 10 years. Uh, but in 10 years, you can do a lot of flying and you, you amortize that cost over that period. It's not that long. So right. it, it, it's what I found about Embraer, and this is all the way true down to the 100, which is really impressive is that you have, you're flying an airline quality manufactured jet. Embraer manufactures those airliners and it goes right through their fleet all the way down to the smallest airplane. And the quality of construction, durability, the reliability is there. And I'm, I'm extremely fascinated. I'm glad I had this opportunity to, to have this experience in this, not only in this segment of aviation, but just to fly this up. I'm very happy with it. Well, Mark, I'm going to close by asking you what you think is the best thing about the Phenom 300 and which thing you wish could be different. Okay. The, the um, best thing is the um, takeoff performance and climb to altitude uh, from the cruise. And the um, worst thing about it, I don't really have a worst thing. Not yet, at least. Um, it, if they could do anything that might make pilots' lives easier, is maybe to put in auto throttles in the airplane. But, but I, it doesn't bother me. I don't. It, it's so natural to go back to flying an airplane with manual thrust levers. I mean, that's how I started out, so it wasn't a big transition. It's, it's just a joy to fly. And um, the other day when we're taking off, at, you know. I was put ceiling and all visibility out of asking with the mountains all around. I have solid confidence in the airplane, two engines or one engine, that we're going to get out of there safely. It's just,
it's just a really good flying airplane. It's a pilot's airplane. I love hearing that. I think that's a great endorsement. It's a pilot's airplane. Mark, thank you so much for all of your insight about both of the Phenom aircraft. I really appreciate you. Mm -hmm.